The Boat Tail Riviera. Few cars in automotive history are fraught with so much controversy and opinions over whether or not the design was excellent or was something that was sorely lacking. Introduced for the 1971 model year and continuing through 1973, the Boat Tail Riviera was a riff on a theme that was very popular with GM design chief Bill Mitchell in the early 1970s. Mr. Mitchell, as his subordinates would often call him, was especially fond of boat tail rear ends, so much so that he put them on everything from the 1963 Corvette to even the 1971 Grand Prix refresh, and certainly the most boat tail of all of them, this 1971 Buick Riviera. And while the car certainly ended up with a design that one could call interesting, let's first discuss how the car came to life and what designers were originally thinking for the vehicle before a number of significant parameters changed materially. Originally conceived in Jerry Hirschberg's Advanced Buick Studio, the original proposal for the 71 Boattail Riviera was actually much smaller and narrower than the final car that was produced. The designers had envisioned a car that was built off of the A body or A special platform similar in size to the Chevrolet Monte Carlo and Pontiac Grand Prix. This smaller platform enabled designers to carry out Bill Mitchell's desire for the overall shape with a strong sweep spear theme across the body side, something that resembled the styling of old Delahays that Bill Mitchell really enjoyed. As the designers continued to work on the theme in 1968, they developed a beautiful clay model here shown in silver and black dye knock with extremely sensitive and wonderful looking surfaces, really different from the production model that ended up with much more mechanical surfaces with still significant visual interest, but less surface sculpture. Unfortunately, the smaller prototype based on the A platform would not make it through to production as the corporation would soon decide that the Riviera would be taken off of General Motors full-size B body platform a decision that was similar to what occurred with the Eldorado as well as the Toronado. Varying reasons exist for why this decision was made, with some individuals saying that for the Riviera, Buick General Manager Lee Mays wanted to ensure that the Riviera was going to get appropriate levels of economies of scale, thus necessitating it to move to the B-Body platform, which was GM's high-volume platform at the time. However, it's likely that this was a broader corporate decision in light of the fact that both the Tornado and Eldorado also migrated to the larger B-body based platform. In any case, all three cars ended up larger than the designers wanted. And Bill Mitchell, the chief of GM Design, was not particularly happy about this decision, but it appears there was not much that he could do about it. While the transition to the full-size B-body platform did create some challenges for designers, the trio of the Tornado, Eldorado, and Riviera did end up selling well. In fact, the Tornado and the Eldorado outsold the previous generation quite significantly, albeit the Boattail Riviera didn't prove quite as popular with customers as the previous generation Riviera. When the production car was introduced in 1971, it featured very unique styling, albeit significantly toned down and different from the original A-body proposal. And 1971 was the most extreme year for the Boat Tail Riviera, as in 1972 and 1973, various bumper standards were implemented, which caused the overall plan view of the Boat Tail to shrink from its most pointy year in 1971 to significantly less pointy, especially by the 1973 model year at both the front and rear. Under hood, the Riviera featured Buick's top-of-the-line 455 cubic inch V8, making 250 net horsepower in 1971, 72, and 73, although there was a Grand Sport option that gave a little bit extra horsepower in some years. But most every Riviera was outfitted with the standard 250 horsepower engine. Only one transmission was offered, and that was GM's extremely smooth-shifting and durable turbohydromatic 400. The Riviera also employed coil springs at all four corners to give the driver a quite supple and smooth ride. And in 1971 only, the Boattail Riviera, like other GM vehicles of that unique year, featured GM's flow-through ventilation system, which included louvers on the trunk 
to help exhaust in-cabin air. Unfortunately, subsequent to release, it was discovered that these louvers could potentially enable exhaust gases to be pulled back into the cabin and potentially asphyxiate customers, so this feature was quickly eliminated after the 1971 model year. Many 71 to 73 Rivieras were also outfitted with vinyl tops, although this was a subject of extreme controversy at the highest levels within GM design, with reports that styling chief Bill Mitchell almost got into fisticuffs with the Buick general manager over offering the vinyl roofs on these vehicles. He allegedly had to be restrained in the executive parking garage before relenting and delivering a vinyl top offering on the vehicle. While GM styling chief Bill Mitchell admittedly didn't want the car to come off the B-body at first, it appears that he and the styling team at least somewhat half-heartedly embraced the new full-size boat tail rib as they came out with the Silver Arrow 3 in 1972, which was a modified version of the boat tail Riviera, including high-mounted stop lamps, and it was introduced at the 1972 Detroit Auto Show. However, I must admit that as cool as the 71 to 73 Boat Tail Riviera is, it would have been especially nice to see the original A body based concept through to production. It's unfortunate that the B body was just too wide that the Sweep Spear theme couldn't make it past the A pillars without exceeding the maximal 80 inches in width allowed under federal law. It would have arguably been a more apt successor to the second generation Riviera. And you can see in some of these other concepts how dynamic of lines the vehicle indeed had. However, the boat tail that went through to production still remained quite unique, but never really captivated the hearts of buyers quite like the previous generation did. The car sold relatively well at about 33,000 to 35,000 units per year each year from 1971 to 73, but that was a bit of a haircut from the previous generation, particularly the 1969 model year, where 53,000 Rivieras were sold. In any case, the Boat Riviera is certainly one of the vehicles in GM design history that's the most recognizable and, again, quite controversial. People generally either love it or hate it. I, for one, think that while the production model didn't have the same dynamism as the pre-production proposals, it still remains a very unique and handsome vehicle, and one that perhaps someday I will indeed own. Thanks again for watching this video on the Boat Tail Riviera. Until next time, take care. Thanks again for watching this video on the Boat Tail Riviera. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe as that helps the YouTube algorithm serve this up to more viewers like you. And if you really enjoyed it, be sure to hit Super Thanks, which is the heart-shaped icon with a dollar sign in it at the bottom right of your video browser. Until next time, be sure to check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right. And thanks again for watching.